What's up, party animals? My name is Kezzy. All right, that's enough of that. What's up, party animals? My name is Kezzy, and I am bad at singing, but I'm part of a band. Now, it's not like, it's not a band band. No one plays guitar, no one plays drums yet, but it's me and a couple friends, and we make probably... How do I say this politely? We make bad music on purpose. And I think that's one of the most inspiring things you could do is, you know, make music not with the intent of it being good, but with the intent of it being fun. We will drop an entire album in a day and every song will be a banger. Now, a lot of this, I take like just a bunch of loops from Splice, put them together, and make a song out of it. It, it, it. It's it's completely about the fun, not necessarily about the musics or the lyrics we sing, just all fun all the time. And one of the big, and, and I've learned a ton from it because I don't have to spend time, you know, crafting sounds and picking melodies and a bunch of other stuff. I just, you know, search up the word clown and what does Splice give me but bangers. So, um, but, it's kind of put me in a position as a mixing and arrangement engineer instead of worrying about all the other effects that go into making music. And um, I recently, re recently, I got auto-tune. And what's really fun is being bad at singing, but listening to yourself singing in auto-tune. It's like singing in the shower, but way better. You actually feel like you're doing a good job. And so my buddy, he has a fancy microphone and he'll sing over the tracks we make together. And just, I'll, I'll, I'll put a link in the description of our band. Um, it is, it is not safe for work by any means. So viewer discretion is advised for that by far, but it's fun music. Um, a lot of inspiration coming from people like uh, Joji, or not Joji, <laughs> Pink Guy, or like, you know, Bo Burnham kind of stuff where it's music, that's just funny. The whole point is to be funny. I, I, but I've been doing that for a while and it's taught me a ton of things about how to work with vocals because that's been something that just, I haven't, sometimes I'll make a song, every once in a while I'll just make a song and I'll just be like, man, this sounds like it could use some vocals, but not always. And at the very beginning when I was working with this uh, YFB group, I would make tracks that just had no room for vocals. So the tip I'm saying today, and I'm showing you a song I made, but the tip I'm putting out today is leave room for vocals. It's important. You want, you want a lot of room for vocals. It's just like as if you're gonna have someone on stage, if you're standing in the middle of a crowd trying to sing, you're not going to make the impact that any other singer would make. And so you need to have the space for your vocals to breathe. When, when, when you, you, the, the goal is to not necessarily make the music the banger, but have the music surrounding the vocals to lift it up, lift it higher. Because you want the, the, the vocals, once you add vocals to a track, aside from like a few ambient type things, but as soon as you add vocals and lyrics to a track, that's where the listener wants to listen to. That's when your ears perk up and you're like, oh man, words. And so anything you do to lift those up is what's really important here. And that is what I'm showing today. The, the, the less is more. And this goes for a lot of things, but especially if you're writing music with the intent of adding vocals. So let's go to the computer. Um, my bed is uh, in the wash right now, but you can see that I have uh, four body pillows. Yeah, <laughs> I have a lot of those. But yeah, so, um, excuse my absolutely horrible singing. Um, it gets better on the chorus, but marginally. Heart is dry, on and on an endless climb, trying to stop, crying all the time, cause I know that I Fighting like to try to be free. Vision smoky. Hating like stuff. 
So, what did we learn from that? One, Kezi sucks at singing. But two, there are very few elements here. So you only have, b between all of the elements that we have, we have currently playing at the very beginning, the lyrics that I'm singing, and some chords. That's it. That's all. Just the lyrics and the chords. After the song picks up a bit, because most of this is built up to the, uh, to the chorus, uh, we have hi-hats playing right here. And that's all. Just the hi-hats, the chords, and the lyrics. And then, when the guitar comes in, it's really starting to feel like it's picking up. And I'll add like a little bit of lead in with the snares here. And then we get just, we get just the percussion sounds. No kick yet, e either. So it's the, gonna be the chords, the guitar, and my lyrics. And then, when the actual beat drops, we have a riser and a, 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 a cymbal crash, and we add the bass line. The bass only comes in during the chorus. Every other time, it's just building up to that bass. I, I guess you could say it's a bass drop. But in here, we now have... So we actually have two vocal tracks here. This is one of my favorite tricks. So one of the best ways to just absolutely thicken up your vocals is to add, is, is to record yourself twice. And this can actually go with any kind of acoustic instrument. Yes, your voice is acoustic. But if you have like, even an electric guitar, as if, if there's something physically, mechanically vibrating when you make it, record it twice, take one of the recordings, pan it a little bit to the left, take the other recording, and pan it a little bit to the right. And when you put those together, it makes just such a, an incredible stereo field. And you don't have to add a bunch of, you know, stereo post-processing. It all sounds amazing straight from the box. And between those things, you can modify a little bit, you know, you can add like a little bit of flutter and other things, and you can add lots of, it, it adds a ton of character to the sound when you add, when you do that kind of stereo field work. And it's just, mm, I love it. And that's what I ended up doing for the chorus, which you'll listen to. chorus and I really think it follows the exact same principle while I did add a lot more effects to the vocal part making it pop a lot more there is still only a couple tracks playing in fact if I take the vocals out if I just turn them off feels like it's missing something like you just like cut a like like the, like you just cut a hole right in the middle and that's one of the things that I feel like is super powerful when making um, music with lyrics in it is that you know when the lyrics are missing it shouldn't feel it, it, it should feel like it's lacking something still. It shouldn't feel too busy as it is. And like, while it can at some points, one of the things that I would do if I was gonna actually produce this song to a fuller extent, I don't wanna, cause I just don't wanna, but I, if, if I was going to, I would actually use another part in the chorus and I would figure out which notes I'm singing and have a synthesizer sing in my place. And I think that's something that would add, add to that filling and it would basically just replace it, but it would still feel 
like there's something missing. It wouldn't feel like the full chorus. The full chorus only feels like the full chorus when the chorus is being sung. Because, you know, lyrics and all that. And I think that that's super important when doing uh, any kind of music and mixing any kind of band. So if you have a bunch, if you have, if you have too many instruments, you're going to be too busy. And that's something that is very important to find a balance of. Otherwise, you're going to be making something that you just can't sing over. And one of the things that I feel like is important to know, um, a lot of producers don't sing on their own music. Um, they'll sell beats, and that's a big thing to do, is just selling beats. I don't sell beats, I might though. You gotta leave space. If you're gonna sell a beat to a rapper, well, you can't just have a song that's already finished. There needs to be that kind of space for the rapper to actually rap, to have words over the beat. Again, otherwise, it's just too busy, and you can't have it be too busy because then the lyrics will be muddied, and you won't have a cohesive or coherent song. So, yeah, um, I just wanted to show that, like, I have sung in my life, and I'm not great at it, but I wanted to share that with you, and I wanted to tell you about how I've gone about thinking when working with vocals. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Uh, I'll go ahead and play the chorus for you one more time in my outro. Um, check me out on Patreon, check me out on Bandcamp. This is gonna be uploaded somewhere, I think. So check it out, um, and until next time, Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.